In this video, we're going to be taking a look at two energy problems that are focused on work done by friction. So in this one, we have a two kilogram block that is moving to the right. And as friction opposes the slide, it makes the two kilogram object come to rest after four meters. So we can use two different methods. The most common method would be using force times distance times the cosine of theta. Um, in this one, we don't have any angles involved, so we can do work equals force times distance. Now, as I said earlier, our force that is applying, um, that is being applied over that distance is the force of friction. And the force of friction is found by the mu times the normal force. So our first job is to find the force of friction by multiplying the mu times the normal force, and then we can multiply it by that distance of force. So let's go ahead and plug in some numbers and see what we get. All right, so we got a value of 23.52 joules. What I did is I took the coefficient of kinetic friction and plugged it in right there, 0 0.3. And I knew my normal force was the same as the force of gravity because it's sitting on a flat surface. So I know that Fg is gonna be equivalent to Fn. So my Fg is Mg, mass of two times 9.8. So this collectively here, um, 0.3 times 2 times 9.8 is my force and the distance it is acting on the object is across 4 meters. So we have a final work value of 23.52 joules. Um, in addition to that, um, that force is pushing back to the left. So if we say going to the right is the positive direction, then we'll say going to the left is the negative direction. So you may possibly add a negative there, which would add a negative there which would make sense because the block is losing 23.52 joules in order to make it come to rest. Now the second method would look like this. Um, you would have, have to have an additional piece of information. So for example, it might say the block is sliding at 4.85 meters per second and then eventually comes to rest after four meters, how much uh, work is done by the force of friction. And the second method to find work is to find the change in energy of the system. So in this case, it's a delta K. So the final minus the initial value. And we already know the final value is zero because we come to rest. So one half MV squared would definitely be zero. So we have zero minus our initial of one half two times 4.85 squared and that would leave us with negative 23.52 joules. Okay, so that's our second method. So depending on what you're given or what your preference is, you can solve for the work done by friction one of those two ways. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our second example, which is a little bit more difficult because the object is on a ramp. So we have a force of gravity pulling it down with a perpendicular and parallel component and the block slides down four meters along this 30 degree incline or decline, whichever way you want to look at it. And for this one, we're going to go ahead and use our work equals force times distance formula. So in order to find the force, again, we have to do the mu times the normal force and then multiply it by the distance. So in this case, our normal force is going to be our Fgy, which is equal and opposite of our Fn. So our 30 degree angle is going to translate to this angle right here. So we need the adjacent side. So we're going to find the Fg, which is 19.6 newtons. I know that because it's just 2 times 9.8. And then when I find the Fgy component, that's going to be 19.6 times the cosine of 30 degrees. And that's going to be my Fn. So what I'm going to want to do is take that force and multiply it by the coefficient of kinetic friction, which is right over here, 0 0.3. And then also take that and multiply it by the distance of 4 meters. So this is my force of friction. 
And here is my distance. When I find the product of all those things, then I get a work value of 20.37 joules. Okay, again, because that force is acting opposite of the direction it's moving, I typically put a negative in front of it to show that the 20.37 joules of energy are being removed from the block and the system. In addition to that, I'm going to add an, add an extra component to this question. Now, say, for example, it slides along a flat surface and then eventually comes to rest. And the question is how much work is done by friction to bring it to rest on this flat surface. And how you would do that is it would be a multi-step problem to where we know the energy in the very beginning is MGH. So 2 times 9.8 and then we want the vertical height of this triangle. So it's a 30, if I put a line right here, it's a 30, 60, 90 triangle where the hypotenuse is four meters. So opposite the 30 is gonna be just two meters for the vertical height. So that's my MGH. That's the original total amount of energy I have because I don't have any other energy at that point. And I know it loses 20.37 joules of energy. So if I find the difference between those two, that comes out to 18.83 joules. Now at the bottom of the ramp, I have 18.83 joules at this location right over here. And then as it moves over here, it eventually comes to rest, which means it has zero joules of energy. So the work done in this region of the problem would be negative 18.83 joules because the remaining amount of energy in the block in the system is removed by that green surface. So those are two different methods to get the same result. As I said, you have to solve for it based on what you're given or just what your preference is. Hope that was helpful to you. Thank you for watching and listening.